Good day, traders. The four-step method to high-performance trading is a free course download for increasing your confidence and your ability to execute your trading edge in live time. The link for the download is in the description box below. And the free audio program, the seven-step daily routine for high-performance traders is also a free download to develop your discipline, your confidence, and a winning mindset to master the markets. Again, the download for these links is in the description box. They're both free downloads. Let's get started. Good day, traders. Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about understanding your edge, understanding where the real opportunities lie in the three-day setups. And coming back to traders, if you've just come onto this channel or you're asking questions, uh, as I've mentioned in previous videos, several of your answers will be found in these playlists, three day setups, mastering the trading process. The main folder that we'll be compiling every most recent video into is everything you need is in this playlist, uh, big explosive trade setups, understanding where edge really is. And then psychology, because, uh, traders, you know, you're, uh, you're unaware of the things you're unaware of until you actually get into the market. Traders have no idea how they will behave. They think it's a matter of Stacy, tell me where the entry and exit is. Stacy, tell me this. Stacy, do it live for me. But the fallacy is that you think that watching will actually help you master the process each day of finding the best instrument, finding the best setup on the day that you're trading, and then rinse and repeating that. Watching does not make you better. That's like saying, uh, do you want to come to the gym and watch me work out? Do you want to come to a dinner and watch me eat my dinner? Um, you need to understand what you're going to do in live time. Everybody has a different set of wiring in their brain. Uh, are you going to just bring up a chart and see it moving and get in? Are you going to have random impulsive trades? Are you going to over leverage? Are you going to take a loss and get angry and then revenge trade or, or, get back to the high watermark trade. You've, you've been up money on the day, then you kept trading and you gave it all back plus, and now you want to get it back because you're angry and you don't like your job and you want to get out of your job and you want to trade your way out of your job. You have to do all these things to work on yourself, to master yourself, to master your emotions, your impulses, your desires, hope, greed, fear, pain. But you need to understand what your edge really is. So again, uh, everything you need is in this playlist. Now I'm gonna uh, go over some things today uh, I think that need clarifying, uh, understanding what a 90-10 setup is. Planning, preparing, executing, and developing the understanding of what a pump and dump or a dump and pump setup will look like on the day when it presents. Clarifying again, opening range and initial balance. Understanding basic model for trade entries, three day setups three session setups, Monday's opening range and initial balance. And I want to just emphasize, this is what I do. I'm not arguing, discussing, looking to optimize, looking to add in. This is how I make my living. This is what I do to make money, rinse and repeat, scale it up in size. So whether a trader, another trader agrees, disagrees, wants to add in concepts, all that stuff, I could care less. It means nothing to me. So when traders are telling me things or, or making statements about things, what you need to understand is whatever you're doing, if it's making you money, if your edge makes you money, it's irrelevant what anybody else thinks. That's a powerful thing because as I happily go about my day, rinse and repeat, it means nothing to me. I'm just going to keep doing the same thing because nothing changes. The markets will continue to do what they do. They build up and then they dump or they build up and then they pump. So understanding that gives you the clarity to step back and just sit on your hands as Bill Lipschutz says, and wait. Just learn to sit on your hands and wait. And like Jim Rogers says, wait until the money is laying on the floor in the corner and all you have to do is walk over there, bend down and pick it up. People have said I make things too complicated and um, you know, I'll say this again, if you can count to three and you can tell time, you can make a lot of money. Monday's day one, Tuesday's day two, Wednesday's day three. 
and that resets heading into the closing range of the week. Wednesday becomes day one. I just want to emphasize that uh, it's so important to understand where your edge is. And uh, I get a lot of questions, a lot of questions repeating that uh, asking me all kinds of stuff about things on the inside of the high and the low of the day. And uh, I'll repeat for clarity. I am focused on the high and the low of the day. Uh, those are the two areas that I'm working from. Now, closing price, we're not talking about entries, but we're talking about the setups, the edge, the understanding of the edge. We'll talk about closing price in a moment. Uh, what I want to emphasize to traders is that when you're asking me stuff about price action inside here, that tells me that you're still uh, not understanding what I'm trying to explain to you. And so when we talk about the pump and dump, and the dump and pump opportunities. There are only two types. There are only two types of trades. I repeat this over and over again. Uh, you can call all this gobbledygook and all these other things and look at all these reports and commitments of traders and all these things and, and you know just all kinds of stuff, but it's got nothing to do with pump, pump, pump for a dump or a dump, dump, dump for a pump. That's it. Those are the two trade setups, and that's all I'm looking for. Stacy, can you highlight your cursor? Because we can't tell what levels you're talking about when you're on the chart. There's only two, the high and low of the day. Now, what I want to talk about today is understanding how the templates will build up. So, for example, we can get the break of, uh, on a Monday, the break of a, a Friday's low. And what that tells me is that the low of the week or the low of the day is not let, yet in place. They've gone lower. They're making a lower low on day one. Now they may come back inside on the Monday and work their way up on Tuesday and break a high on Wednesday. Now we have a high. We have a high that's broken and we have a low that's broken. So now that tells me is there's my high, there's my low. Now if on the following day they make a higher high, as I repeat to traders, a higher high on the inside, the inside of what, Stacy? Well, the market was making lower highs and lower lows heading into the new week, our new week, our closing range Friday. And uh, we made lower low on Monday, but then we've come back and broken a daily level. That's not a higher high. That's just the break of a daily level. So we've broken a high, but on the next day, we've made a higher high. Higher high on the inside, the market was coming down front side. Now we're on the inside of the back side is the setup for a dump and a pump. We could have day one back into the low, day two, and a day three that goes parabolic back through our higher high. Now this is where traders need to understand what I'm looking for. Not what liquidity hunts, order blocks, constrict, uh, consolidation, all these things. It's day one, day two, day three, but where's my edge? I'm looking for where are they working the high or are they working the low? So when we've started this new week, they've gone down and made a lower low in a market that's making lower highs and lower lows. Now again, a trader asks, can you go over break in structure, break of structure? What's the difference? I don't know what the difference is the two. All I know is, is that when we break a daily level, all that matters is do they break it a second time? Because if we have lower highs and lower lows and we break a daily level, that is not a higher high. It's a break of a daily high. And as Al Brooks will tell you, that can also be an H1 for a continuation move down with a trapped bull candle. So a bull trap in a strongly moving downward market, which comes back to the understanding of timings, levels, behavior of price. We can have a signal day, and this is where traders get all bottled up. Stacy, it was a first green day, and I don't know how to how to explain this to you, but on a first green day signal, that's fine. But how does the market set up the following day? Does it break down underneath of closing price and make lower lows for a blow off in the U.S. window? Third session on the third day, which comes back to me re-emphasizing to traders. Signal days, signal days, signal days. They're trigger days. They're signal days. Day three breakout traders in the market. Why am I looking for day three breakout traders in the market? If the market's making higher highs each day, 
What is that telling me? That's telling me that the high is not yet in place. If the market is making lower lows, breakout traders lower lows, that means the low of the day, the low of the week is not yet in place. And there, none of those days may actually offer high quality 90-10 best trade setups. Coming back to understanding, do I have an edge in the market or am I being forced to sell down low and catch a move, scalp some pips? Those aren't setups to me. I'm not, I'm not interested in catching a move. Now, I, I want to emphasize this is not arrogance, overconfidence. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to emphasize to traders my perspective on the markets, my perspective, what I'm looking for. I am not interested in all these other little things. It's not about me trying to go there and catch a move every day. I want the market to set up and offer me an opportunity where I, I almost have a, a guarantee if I can say that, that I'm not going to lose. That is my perspective. I, I'm not interested in trying to, you know, be right 55% of the time. I want a 90-10 opportunity inside days. So go back, go through your charts, put your hourly templates up there and understand what type of template is setting up. Are they working the high for a dump? Are they working the low for the pump? It may not even set up. You may be trading an instrument that may only offer 25 pips. The, the Aussie dollar may set up on a poor quality template, but gold or the indexes or maybe the euro yen might offer 50, 75 or 100 pip move if you understand how the templates will build up and when you have an edge in the market. So to kind of clarify that, let me paint a picture because uh, I'm getting a lot of stuff conflicting uh, traders missing the big picture concept. Uh, they're saying, you know, traders are looking at something going, you know, but it was up high and, and you're trying to short something that's on the front side of a move and that is not the trade. Oh, I caught 20 pips. I caught 20 pips. I'm looking for where. Where is this market building up? We could be working the high for three days, working the high, working the high. It may come off of closing price on day three inside and traders go, but you told us we couldn't trade inside. You can't trade inside, Stacy, on, on day three. You said, no, don't trade inside. And I'm saying, hold on a second. We're working the high for three days. We have a lower low and now the market is preparing in the third session on the third day for a capitulation move and we're getting a range expansion opportunity which is why I emphasize going back and studying classical charting principles so that you understand what a range expansion is and and on a day three as we can see after a major news catalyst release they may not come back so there's an opportunity where I can potentially be sizing into this taking some money off and leaving a trailer with confidence that they may close this into the end of the session or the week or the day and that market may close there and not come back which means I can lock in the profits at the end of the day and not be worried about it on a Tuesday or Wednesday that they may still come back work into the low and make a higher high. Traders are um, studying the playbook and then they go back the next week and do the same thing again they get a market up here and they sell it and it's still on the up front side and they go but I got stopped out it was a uh, high of the day and you said high of the day and you know and so I repeat day one day two day three we can have a day one a day two and day three is inside we can get a first green day Thursday and a Friday there's all kinds of possibilities where's my edge where am I getting a market that's coiling for an explosive move so I, I have to hammer home you have to understand what an edge is. We're going to walk through these charts and it's really simple because it all revolves around these two levels. Is a market making lower lows? Did it break a low? That means the low is not in place yet. If they break the low and break a high and trade back into the low, guess what? If they make a higher high and they dump it back down into a low, that is the setup for it dump and pump these levels not the inside marking off 
oh, I'm marking off this, and it broke this, and it was uh, three pushes, and you're inside. You're not, where's, where's the edge? I want an edge where this market is going to either dump down, it might break a level, dump back down, now we've got our setup, maybe on a third session, uh, trader said, you seem to be focused uh, mainly on shorting. No, I'm focused on the setups. If I have better setups for shorting on certain instruments, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take those ones. Just because something is going higher, we, we can have a market that's making higher highs. And all it's doing is grinding slowly. It could be making higher highs and keep grinding. We saw this on the yen. But, but I don't have an edge by getting into this market. And lo and behold, we, we get a following break in structure on a Monday, Tuesday, and the market rifles through this. And the trade, the opportunity comes in the next week. This could be two weeks of just a slowly grinding market. It doesn't make sense. And traders are trying to short it because, oh, there was three days of longs in the market. And that is not the same as break one, break two, break three for a capitulation style trade, which can coincide with the major red news release. Uh, I'm looking to position myself when a market has coiled. We got volume trapped where? We got it trapped up high. Where, are they working the high or are they working the low? So I just want to emphasize the importance of understanding these levels, the levels, the levels, the levels. Now, closing price is where I'm looking for an opportunity for trade entries on the day itself. If there's an opportunity that's presenting, it could be a day two trade. It could be a trend trade on day two. Uh, so we can have a market that closing price is down low on the day and we can get an opportunity for a long trade. Perhaps maybe the market has uh, made a, a lower low. I'll change that to red. The market's made a lower low and pulled back inside and worked into that low, higher highs on the inside and into our US window, given a trade back through the high of the day off of closing price. That's a session trade. That's a fantastic opportunity, maybe for 50 pips, easy free cash. Um, that may be a day three reversal inside off of closing price back to high of day. Psychology behind that is we have uh, maybe day two shorts in the market and traders are trying to trade this with the trend. They're getting caught inside jamming them in for a short squeeze reversal now we've got a break of a daily level we have a break of a daily level but we can still see this market break down on the following day and we have a market that's triggered longs on the upside and we can get an opportunity maybe in asia on the on the back side of this move on a day three blow off so now we have day three shorts in the market day one day two Market uh, traders are trying to trade this with the trend on day three. They give us a parabolic reversal short squeeze. It triggers uh, daily highs, daily breakout traders into the market, longer time frames, hourly, four hour, etc. But now we also have, if we break this level or a target, a potential higher high for a dump and pump setup if the market sets up for that. We'll look at the charts in a moment, but I'm just emphasizing to traders my my perspective. My perspective on the markets is what keeps me out of the inside. So when I talk about Fugazi and traders are sending me questions about uh, all kinds of stuff inside and their names and blocks and gaps and all these things, I, that that's like we're speaking two foreign languages because this is completely off my radar for even looking at charts. I'm not even like I'm looking at that going, what are you even talking about? I have no idea how do you how do I answer that question? And that's not me me being rude or arrogant or anything else. It's me like you're not understanding what I'm trying to explain to you, what I what my edge is, what I'm looking for, what I'm looking for. That's the key. It's not about, you know, what somebody else is telling you or what you've learned somewhere else. It's really simple. So, I have repeated that I, I learned quite an immense amount from Peter Brandt, Stuart Moore, Brent Penfold, Bill McLaren, uh, Edwards and McGee, Schaubacher, classical charting principles. And the reason why that is, is this, this is a, no matter what the price is doing, this is my rectangle. This, this box, this box is what I'm looking for either 
false break, breakout traders, a lot of breakout trades fail. So this is what traders need to understand. If it fails up here and it's a day three and I get a sell high opportunity, this may only go to the low of that box or we may now get a range expansion as a potential profit target. And this whole box is the consolidation. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for range expansion opportunities on day three. That's that's the edge. That's the And I might be in a day three inside of this because we've already triggered the high, triggered the low, gone into consolidation on day three. This could be an inside day. No, we don't restart the day count. We can have one, two. Third day is an inside day. It's still day three, but traders go, oh, we restart the date. No, no. No, it's an inside day. And that can be the trend trade for the coiled move. That's the type of opportunity I'm looking for. Now we have a consolidation, a large consolidation, an even bigger box, peak formation high, peak formation low. That's the day zero setup, page 84 in the playbook. And then we may have a market that's, you know, day one, day two, day three, you know, and it's nothing. And I'm and, and traders are telling me, oh, I, you know, I scalped, uh, I got in, I uh, got 20 pips here or whatever, and I'm looking at the chart going, where was the setup? Um, so, uh, again, I'm looking for something that's well-engineered. What is well-engineered? I repeat this, and I'll, I'll you know keep going over this. Well-engineered is where we get three levels, very distinct, perhaps for a day two trade, back in line with the trend. This could be day one, day two, day three, uh, inside day, pop the top, whatever. And, it, and this can coincide with the Fed week or non-farm payrolls. This could be three days. Or it can be three sessions. That's a well-engineered template. For a week, for a day, we can have other markets that we, we it breaks out. It breaks out on the day. It might be a day three reversal. They're jamming them in, and it's a short squeeze for a low of week or low of day back to high of day. That's a well-engineered template. What is that? That's a dump and a pump template. So there are some simple things that if you go back and step back the question i always am asking myself is where is my edge where i can put size into the market because over time if you're scaling your trading account up the object is to be able to participate in moves that will go from not only the low of the day but maybe the low of the week to the high of the day or the high of the week when we get larger opportunities and when can these occur they can occur, as I've mentioned before, towards in the beginnings of ends of months. We can get very large moves that are from high of week to low of week. We can get them in in markets that are on week three. Uh, so when do markets change? Go back and look at your, your daily charts and look at the timings of new months, ends and, ends and beginnings of months. We see large moves. If you're trading a low volatility instrument, for example, maybe the Aussie or New Zealand dollar or the Swiss franc, you know, or a Swiss franc cross, it may only be a 25 pip box. So part of the reason why I like to look at gold oil indexes is instead of uh, being 25 pips, uh, for example, on an index, it might be 250. Uh, on gold or oil, it might be 150. And on any given day, 50 to 75 on those instruments is, is reasonably achievable. Uh, but more importantly, over the course of the three day opportunities, uh, those ranges, especially if it's a day three, we may have a, uh, you know, again, we saw this last week on oil, uh, market broke down day one, day two, still stayed broken out, broke outside, markets that break out are out of balance, have the potential to now to go on a range expansion, which was what we saw happen on oil, full 100% expansion of the range on day three. So last day I talked about templates and uh, we're just, I'm going to walk through a couple different instruments and just, just have some simple understandings of looking at charts, beginnings of new weeks. When can we see things potentially change direction? Well, obviously highs and lows of weeks, beginnings or endings of weeks. And if we just go back to what I just talked about, uh, understanding highs and lows. So we have a, a Thursday and the market breaks a daily level. We're looking at the British pound one hour chart. Last day we talked about uh, there's only three things that markets do. They break out, they pull back, and they trend. They break out, pull back, reverse, and fail. Failed breakout. Or they stay range-bound in a trading range. But when we look at these daily levels, uh, so for example, 
we have a market that's making higher highs and higher lows. The first time it breaks a daily level is the break of the low of day level. That's the first time. So uh, again, a trader asked, well, can you go over break a structure, break BIS, BOS? All that's like, I don't even, it broke a daily level. That's the first time. That's the only levels I'm looking at. I repeat, those are the only levels I'm looking at. I'm not talking about trade entries with closing price. I'm talking about breakouts of daily levels. This is the first one. So now we have a low that's broken, a low of the day that's broken in a market that's making higher highs and higher lows. The next day, Friday, free cash Friday, we have higher highs on the inside back up above that daily level. Higher high on the inside is a dump and pump setup on the day for a parabolic reversal trade on free cash Friday. What is that? Breakout pullback, back up into our daily level, break of a daily level heading into our new week. Did we take out the high of the week? Are they working the high or are they working the low? So understand, are they working the high or are they working the low? Where's our high? They're working the high, it breaks down on Monday and offers a shorting opportunity on day one in our US window underneath the closing price pump and dump template and and I'm, I'm just gonna walk through some simple things did they work the higher work day low where's the closing price of the week remember remember we talked about this uh, go back and watch the videos in the playlist high and low of the week and closing price of the week why is closing price important because that is a fixed level three levels that I'm trading from so while traders are studying all these bars unless I have a setup on the day for a well-engineered template a dump and pump on, on a free cash Friday, right? Friday and Wednesday, free cash Friday, off the levels. What is the thesis? Do I have a well-engineered template? They go back up into the high of the week and break down on Monday, lower lows on the inside. There's a time and a place to look at a chart. We've already broken a daily level on the day. What is the thesis now? Oh, but you're inside, Stacy. I thought you said that's Fugazi. We have traders trapped at the beginning of the week at the high of the day. Parabolic reversal inside on Free Cash Friday. We have a lower low. A lower low. A break of a daily level. Day two, Tuesday. Have we broken the low of the week? No, but now we have a lower low low the low again bring this across did we take out the low of thursday no we didn't markets that coil sideways are what i repeat markets that coil sideways are preparing for potentially an explosive move what is monday now monday is first red day after a market pumps up into the high of the week, high of the day, breaks down, breaks the daily level. This is now a failed breakout. Once the daily level on the opposite side is broken, we have first red day. First red day is a high of the day, high of the session, shorting opportunity, if indeed it presents. Now, I'm not going to worry about news calendar or anything. I'm just trying to emphasize the template and the opportunity as the markets evolve. We're just looking at different instruments, not to say that this was the best trade candidate on the day, but the, the, the process. So when traders say, um, oh, trade live for me, I need to see you do it live, but, but you're missing the whole point. What instrument? What setup? What day? What session? Like that's ridiculous. Go and do your homework. Master the skill of going through your instruments to know where you're at in the templates. Nobody can, you, you can watch a thousand, there, look, there's, I'll, I'll say this right now, there's a hundred live channels out there. Go watch them, go watch them. If that's what you want, go watch those channels because there's all these people who are trading live and, um, you know, go, go for it. But I want to know where's my edge? Where is my edge? Day one, day two, lower lows now. Is the market working the low or is it working the high? They're making lower lows. That tells me that the low of the week is not yet in place. But the lower I go, 
do I still have potentially uh, an edge in the market if I'm going to be targeting the low of the day, the low of the week in a market that's continuing to break down? Where do I want to be selling up high? Am I getting that opportunity in my U.S. window or am I being forced to sell down low on this particular instrument, the British pound? No edge for me. Like, yeah, This is the example of where I'm not really willing to be selling down low. Now, on an instrument that might offer me 250 pips between closing price and the low of the day, that's a little different. But in this particular market, this is, you know, traders are trying to short this trend trading. And yes, it's a winning trade, but how much... How much edge do I really have? Like I, uh, I'm looking for where I've got an opportunity to sell up here to go down here. So the market continues to break down lower. And an example of day one, day two breakout traders in the market, day three breakout traders in the market, and a reversal later in the U.S. window for a session opportunity, perhaps. Again, something the difference between putting a lot of size on a trade versus just scalping that and taking the money, nailing and bailing. And you'll notice we trade back into the level. So traders are, again, telling me, oh, I got all chopped up on the one minute chart and you're, you're trading off like in all this crap. And all I'm looking at, all I see is levels. Levels, low of day, closing price, high of day. That's it. So when... These candles are one hour charts and, and I reemphasize to traders when an hour ends and a new one begins, where am I? What is my trade thesis? Because look, all, all this is right here is the beginning of the third hour at the low of the day with a reversal set up on a smaller time frame. And we'll, we can look at that. That's all it is. It's Thursday. Three days of breakout traders in the market. They're jamming traders into the low for a, a short uh, squeeze reversal for a session trade. Here we are. The hour ends, the new one begins. And where does it go? It goes from low of day to high of day. It doesn't quite get there. We get a little three bar consolidation, take the money and run if that's the trade that you were looking for on the day. It's just the beginning of the new hour. So traders are calling all these things and gaps and marking off three pushes. And it's like, no, the new hour begins at the level. At the low of day, I've got a reversal setup. Bang, there's the trade. It, it's, it can be as simple as you want. Some traders are shorting it down low into the low of the week, the low of the day to catch a move. Other traders are looking at this for the reversal opportunity. They understand time rotation. We have three days of breakout traders in the market and they also know it's a non-farm payrolls week. And we break down on the inside heading into payrolls on a market that's continuing to make lower lows and lower highs. They've traded up into the high of Wednesday. Wednesday resets as our day one, the midpoint range of the week. And so when traders say, Stacy, it's so confusing. It's it, you just you just you, you're confusing me. Wednesday's day one. It resets into the closing range of the week. Friday's day three, free cash Friday. And we had non farm payrolls of a market that broke out on payrolls, pulled back gave a first bounce trade at the high of the payrolls candle for the continuation trade back through the low of the week in line with our broken down market, lower lows, lower highs on free cash Friday. I'm not saying that this was the best instrument to trade, but this is how simple it can be. This is when I'll look and see one push, two push, three push, but look what time it is. We're at the end of the first hour after non-farm payrolls. Even if we just trade the high bull, the high bull. High bull. Go read John Carter's book, Mastering the Trade, Hope Lope. The high of the low period, the low of the high period. And that's all that this is. There's no uh, furu names or anything. These have been around since the beginning of trading. I know people are saying that they wrote algorithms and everything else. And it's like, you know what? It's just a sell high setup after after the news. And, and so repeating, traders uh, come here and say, you said you don't trade the news. Now you're trading the news. And it's like, you're not even listening. After the news is done, after the news is done, this one minute candle, okay, the market now can be traded. They've released payrolls. Doesn't mean I'm going to trade this. Now there's some traders who trade the re traded the reversal. Again, I, that's not my playbook. I'm just looking at this. This is the end of the hour. The new hour is about to start. They've got a bull. This is a bull candle now. One bull candle in a broken down market. Al Brooks, H1, 
for the short trade back down one bar stop there's just a set that's a session trade after the news payrolls is over there's going to be another trade heading into the new york open and we had a third hour news candle release but but here's the thing this is my thought process one or two trades there's my work window done that's it. Whether that's on just a normal day, a normal session, whatever that may be. That's that's my mindset. I'm not like I'm going to catch the low. I'm going to get the high. I'm going to I'm going to scalp in and out. I'm going to get it after payrolls. I'm going to catch some pips. No, I'm looking at where is my best opportunity after the news is released. There's going to be news opportunities for news momentum catalyst trades after the news is released, not before the news is released. I talk about first bounce and first bar. And I also talk about once the news is released, continuing on with the original thesis. Now let's look at our five minute chart. The market was trading off of closing price from the inside, blowing off, breakout pullback, continuation. Same trade as on gold, just smaller volatility. This is the exact same chart, except gold was in a three day template for a measured move down. We were at the low of the week already. With gold, they went to the low of the week for a range expansion. Same trade, breakout pullback, continuation so re-emphasizing the levels the longer the time frame now 15 minute we're, we're selling down low at the low of the week the market has already come off of closing price level so traders will say yeah but you said you only take trades at the levels I'm not saying that this is, was the best one but the template was there for the, the the continuation trade on the smaller time frame in line with the larger time frame template we go back to our one hour chart. All this is is day one, day two, day three, a reset. A reset. Did they work the higher, work the low in a broken down market? There's our reset. Did they trade back up into that level, made lower lows and pumped back up into that level, the daily high? Consolidation breakdown, breakout pullback, continuation on free cash Friday. I'm just looking at the template. Templates, daily levels consolidation they break the level lower lows that means the low is not yet in place now we'll just walk through the nasdaq and i, I just well, really it's the process the process the process we have a market that's making higher highs heading into our new week we break out on thursday we see a reversal trade on friday inside so we've broken a daily level breakout pullback no daily levels broken but on monday they break down on Monday, new new week, new timing cycle. So we're not talking about trades here, session trades, U.S. session. I'm just talking about breaking the levels. So traders are um, focused on all the little bars. And I'm just saying right now, look at the levels and understand the larger template opportunity. And you'll be able to participate in some sizable opportunities if you understand what these levels mean. When they break down on a Monday, what does that tell us? That tell us, tells us that the low is not yet in place. Why is that? Because they're still going lower. But they've broken down on Monday. What that does mean, though, is, is that they could be going down at the beginning of the week to put the low in place. We had the short squeeze reversal opportunity on day two, which we went over that several traders hit this week. It's an inside day. So we have our low of the week level in place on Monday. At the close of Tuesday, it's an inside day. So that's the lowest point as the new week starts day one day two on day three we break a daily high level right at the beginning of the new day in asia so understanding as i repeat inside inside i need to have if i'm trading on the inside i need to have a thesis what were they doing they were jamming traders down into the low we've broken out as i said we've got a market that's in breakout so this is in play i'm not on the inside i'm actually broken out i'm actually broken out of the low of the week so I can look at this market. Some traders are saying, yeah, but you're inside. You're still not understanding the market broke out. They put a low in place and they traded down into that low. One, two, three pushes and reversal New York open, short squeeze. Now at the close of that, we have an inside day. We have a daily level broken. That confirms now that this may be our peak formation low for the week. They went up and made a higher high at the beginning of our New York window. Where is the volume on day three contained? Up high into our closing price of the week. 
we have a higher high on the inside that dumps down into the low of the day level. But is that the low of the week? No, it's not, but it's a low of day level. And that trigger shorts, stops out the longs from the New York session into the peak formation low. We have a higher high. That is the setup for the dump and pump parabolic opportunity. Go back and study the short squeeze setup. The short squeeze setup. Short squeeze. We can get three day short squeeze setup. We can get a one day short squeeze setup. Page 90 in the playbook. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Parabolic collapse. Consolidation. It's a first red day. How does price behave on the day in the template? So again, several traders messaging saying, but it was first red day. How did the chart set up on the day? We're trading into the high or into the low of the week. Are they working the high or are they working the low? Peter Brandt, a pattern within a pattern, a rectangle that breaks out and coils in the parabolic setup into our New York Open for the explosive reversal back through the high of the week. Higher high, now we have a second daily level broken. A higher high, just bring this across so traders can see that. Higher high is the template for what? The dump and pump. First green day. First green day. So we had payrolls that spikes down into our parabolic longs and you'll notice the New York open window, the low of the New York session is where this market goes to, which is why I emphasize to traders, we're inside on this particular day, we're inside of the high and the low, the market did not break out, it broke the level and closed back inside. That's our New York peak formation high. So some traders have said, yeah, but you mark off, sometimes you mark off levels inside and your peak formations are all over. Let me repeat, the high and the low of the day are made by peak formations in a session, whether that's Asia, London, New York. When New York index is open, we have a peak formation that forms the low of that session inside. That's the low of New York. It's a US index. Index is open at 930. Was there an opportunity to enter in this before the session began? Yes, there was. On a short squeeze parabolic opportunity, some traders got in early. But there, the other mindset behind that is, is that you don't need to get in early. Or, or if you are going to get in early, understand the setup that you have. So we have an hour prior to this opportunity. But it's, but it's already coiled. If we're heading into major red news, as we see here, traders that get in early, they still spike down. This is the parabolic coil. It's going to explode at the open. This is an example of where payrolls, the news is used to spike down into traders that were long that did not take off the money. We have a market that makes a higher high inside. Inside on the day. Higher high is the setup for dump and pump, which gives traders the confidence after payrolls to enter into this market at the levels, coinciding with our longer time frame opportunity. Now again, we had major red news, but we have an opportunity where the market coils, reverses off of payrolls into the open of the New York session for an explosive reversal and gain on third hour news back through the high of the week. Breakout pullback, auctioning down lower before continuing and closing outside of the high of the day area. Uh, so some traders shorted this for a reversal opportunity. So they had shorting opportunities. This index offers enough volatility, but we're shorting into a first green day, which is why we saw the reversal. Potentially this market was putting in the low, higher highs, dumping back down into the low before continuing later in the session. Now backing this up, that was a five minute chart. The point I'm trying to emphasize is over the course of the week, understanding what these daily levels mean. I know I, I, some people are gonna say, rambling on rambling on i want to emphasize where's at where's my edge present if there's news no news do i have a setup do i have a setup on the day itself am i already in breakout have they broken levels have they broken levels on opposite sides 
What type of template is it? A dump and a pump. This one trade by itself, the parabolic short squeeze, one trade for the whole week with size is all you need to have. And as several traders have mentioned to me, they've doubled or tripled their account in the last few weeks just by focusing on parabolic templates, not trying to catch all the moves every day and trade every movement in the market. Uh, so this is why I sometimes uh, traders will ask questions and I, I don't even know where to start. I'm looking at levels. I can't answer that. It's the levels, the levels, the levels, the levels. What type of template? Is it a dump and pump template? Is it a pump and dump template? We can go back through, but this is where you need to go and do your homework. When a new week starts, we have highs and lows. Is the market working the high or is it working the low? Is it putting a low in first? It breaks out on a Monday. Maybe that's going to be the low of our week. We have an inside day. They go higher. Now, some traders are trading this in Asia. I don't trade. I only trade these markets in, in the U.S. Uh, window. They gave a high of the week reversal opportunity at the New York Open on Free Cash Wednesday. First red day. What type of template did they give us on the day? They trade back up into the high of our opening range at the beginning of the, the U.S. session for the collapse on Thursday, day two. Day one, revert failed breakout. We now have breakout traders in the market now potentially this could be a low of the week i don't know are they working the higher working the low heading into our new york window what type of template is this we have a higher high on the inside in a market that broke out of a daily level it's in breakout right now it took out the low of the week and the low of the day it's in breakout a higher high is the setup for the dump and pump template heading into our new york open one hour, two hours, third hour, three pin reversal. So as we're working the low rotation of time for a parabolic reversal short squeeze on free cash Friday for a session opportunity. These are the types of opportunities that I'm looking for day threes. And we're, sometimes it might be on a Thursday. We might have a continuation day in line with our larger template. But it's the levels. Did it break out? Where did it go? What time is it? So I get all kinds of crazy questions like, uh, if it breaks it out the first hour in London, do I short it? What does that mean? Like, what day is it? What template are we in? Are you shorting a market that's in, you know, a day two continuation trade going long? You know, they might jam you in for 15 pips and then explode for another hour in the long direction. I need to just paint pump and dump, dump and pump. Uh, that's my psychology. The, the video today is psychology. It's... It's stepping back. Where's my edge? Where's my edge? There's an edge. The market breaks out, explodes, coils sideways, coils sideways in breakout. Breaks down, lower lows, lower highs, a parabolic reversal into breakout traders, levels, timings, behavior of price. Goes into consolidation, breakout pullback, continuation, news, spikes the high gets the shorts so um, I'm just really hammering home stepping back stepping back and looking through a basket of instruments which one's set up today which ones maybe maybe the indexes are all set up which one's the cleanest maybe the Canadian dollar is the cleanest chart today out of everything for my session maybe you're trading Asia and the Euro Aussie is the best template on the day for that session um, maybe Friday, the third session, the New York session, is offering us a parabolic explosion, but there's major red news. And so maybe it's only going to be a session trade, uh, whatever that may be, nailing and bailing. Uh, but is it in line with that larger time frame thesis? It's not all the, all the little consolidations inside. Day one, day two, day three. What type of template do I have? What type of opportunity? What, what instrument is the best instrument on the day? And so when you get into the process of understanding which charts are setting up the cleanest, it only takes 10 minutes to scroll through because half the time, most of those currency pairs are only going to offer one or two trades a week in a session. That's it. They, that, the, my, where I have a 90-10 opportunity. So I know right away it's yep, next, 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 next. Okay, this is building up for maybe uh, an opportunity on Thursday on the Japanese yen. Let's take a quick look at that. Just while we're here, we went over this yesterday. They broke down on Monday. 
They went lower on Monday. What is that telling me? That the low is not yet in place. They went lower. But they broke a daily high on Wednesday. Now, I mentioned this in yesterday's video. When they broke Friday's low of, low of day, and in this particular case, the low of the week, we know that there are stops above Friday's high of day. Day one, day two is an inside day. Again, the inside day is a trigger day, signal day for a potential opportunity for either a false break reversal or a trend trade opportunity. So if we go back and understand opening range initial balance, we have an inside day on Tuesday. Are they working the high or are they working the low? Day one, day two, and on day three, we get one push, two push, and a third push into the high. One, two, three on day three, and it triggers the low of the day on Thursday in our Asian window. So let me just repeat this. The consolidation is not inside. The blue high-low levels is your consolidation. Are they making higher lows heading into the Thursday? Look at, look at the low of day. Higher lows. Are we making higher highs? They broke the high of the inside day and went sideways and we are underneath the highest closing price of the week before they break the daily level. It's now in breakout. Where are we heading? We have a large geometrical rectangle. Peter Brandt, Schaubacher, Edwards and McGee, study classical charting. This may go on a range expansion. It may have only gone 100%. That's still an asymmetrical risk reward opportunity. Asia, London, New York, low hanging fruit continuation trade. Page 96 in the playbook. That is your consolidation. We're inside of Friday, the closing range of the week. Closing range of the week. The market breaks down, makes a lower low, and then pumps up into the high. They put a low in place, they put a high in place. Are they working the high or are they working the low? So when traders are sending me all kinds of questions that aren't even related to high and low, and they're missing the, the bigger picture concepts, I want you to go back and study the levels, not the candles, not the little bars. This is big picture concept. It's really simple. This is where the edge in the market lies. Day one, day two, day three. Escalator, elevator, rinse and repeat every single week. Doesn't matter what instrument. That's my mindset. So all this other stuff, it doesn't matter whether they like it, they don't like it, whether they believe it, don't believe it, I'm getting paid. Like one trader said to me, either way, you're getting paid. That's what I want to repeat is that this is not going away. It doesn't matter what market. Does it work in futures? Does it have open, high, low, and close in buyers and sellers? Is it a market? Does it have people trading it? Does it work in crypto? Do they have people trading it? It's the same thing. Crypto, I don't, I don't, if I was trading crypto, I'd ignore Saturday, Sunday, Monday to Friday, day one, day two, day three. Reset, day one, day two, day three. Is there a parabolic template setting up for a rinse and repeat best trade parabolic candidate setup? That's my mindset. Not interested in anything else. Don't care, uh, which is why you hear me say, I don't know what it's going to do tomorrow. I don't even care, but I want to know there's a signal day. Sure. I'm going to go look what type of daily template is setting up on the day. Is it in line with my bigger time frame thesis? There are some huge opportunities in these markets. It is not about little one minute consolidations inside. So when you ask me questions about that and I don't answer them, you'll understand why. I don't know anything about that. That's, that's not what I'm talking about here. I am talking about larger, scalable, sizable opportunities to significantly grow your trading account. Bulletproof yourself for success. Discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset comes from understanding your trade setups, not trying to trade a market. That is my mindset. I don't even care about trading a market. I'm looking for setups. That's it. I'm just looking for where is my, my edge? Where do I know I have a 90-10 opportunity? Whether that's on gold, oil, the euro, the S&P. All this other stuff is just complete tomfoolery. I, I don't even know where to go with half the shit that's out there with people spewing garbage on the internet. It's like edge. 
These principles are timeless. Go read Peter Brandt's book. Get in the headspace of becoming a master craftsman, being willing to sit on your hands and knowing when you have real edge in the market. Keep getting better, traders, and this is a winnable game if you master yourself. Watching doesn't make you a master of anything. Go through the process. Follow 10 charts and don't trade them. Just master the process until you start to recognize these templates. These opportunities are endless. Everything else means nothing to me. I'm just going to keep doing the same thing. It keeps happening over and over and over again. Rinse and repeat. The rest to me is just hogwash and BS. So keep it simple. And it's as simple as one, two, three. Day one, day two, day three. What type of opportunity do I have? Did they put in a low? Did they put in a high? Is it a day zero? Has it already moved? Is it low-hanging fruit? Is it a short squeeze setup? Is it a parabolic trend trade on day two? Is it a high of the month, high of the week reversal? Is it already collapsing and I'm just jumping in for the free ride? Whatever. Keep it simple. It's not that hard. Uh, the hard part is mastering yourself. Don't over leverage. Don't impulse trade. Don't just randomly try and scalp highs and buy lows and catch moves. Trade this gap, trade that gap, and blah, blah, blah. What setup is it? What setup do you have? Where's your real edge that will rinse and repeat? That's your business model. That's my mindset. I've done enough stupid things over the years listening to all the other garbage and doing stupid things and doing own, my own impulsive, emotional, irrational behavior to know that I am a, was the biggest enemy in all of this. And when people say, too complicated, I say, well, go back and learn to count to three. Monday's day one. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Wednesday's day three, free cash Friday, day three. Yes, there are other opportunities in line with these template and levels. 1% better every single day. Keep getting better. It's a winnable game. And may the markets go with you.